Okay, hi all. Uh, for today's lesson, we're going to talk about graphing sequences, number sequences. And we're going to start with an example, which is to graph the number sequence Tn equal to 2n minus 1 uh, for n between 1 and 5. So just the first five terms, term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, and term 5. And we notice for a start that um, this sequence, just by observation, is going to turn out to be a linear sequence, isn't it? Because the power of n, the highest power of n here is n to the power of 1. Now, graphing sequences or number sequences is just like graphing functions that you've done before. So knowing that this is a linear sequence, you can imagine the graph of this linear sequence is going to be a line. It's going to turn out to be a straight line. Um, so the first thing we're going to need uh, in order to graph it is we're going to need the points we're going to plot. And in order to uh, work out what the points are, we're going to actually have to use this uh, term n or general term to find the first five terms in this um, in this sequence. So uh, to do that, all we have to do is say t1 is equal to, and we need to sub in one here to the general term. So it's two times one minus one. So two ones are two, take one is one. So term one is equal to one. We can do the same thing for the second term. Term two is equal to, 2 times 2 minus 1. Well, 2 twos are 4, take 1 is 3. Now, if we've been, uh, I suppose, listening to what's been going on so far, we have we know that this is a linear sequence. If we have the first two terms, 1 and then 3, and we know because this is a linear sequence that the first difference is constant, it's the same all the way through, well then, if term 1 is 1, for instance, if we write it like this, 1 and term 2 is 3. If the first difference here is 2, then the next, all of these um, differences between the, the these terms should be 2 if it's a linear function, or linear pattern rather, sequence. So we know the next one is going to be plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 2 is 9, and there we have our first five terms. So we don't need to do the subbing for all five of the terms in this case. So when we have our terms then, I'm just going to lay this out in a table. So I'm going to pause for a second and lay it out. Okay, so all I did was draw out this little table like a frequency distribution. And what I put on top was the term number. So term one, term two, term three, term four, term five, and the value of term one underneath it. So term one is one, isn't it? Term two is three. Yes, it is. Term three is five, term four is seven, and term five is nine. So from this table now, I'm going to use this to um, draw the graph. In uh, most questions, if they want you to draw the graph, they'd probably give you this table first uh, first time without making you work out what the terms were. But um, just in case they didn't, we went through that step. So again, I'm going to pause there just to draw out a little bit of the graph and then we'll plot the points together. Okay, so uh, I've just drawn out the axes of the graph here. Now, um, just like in the, um, like if you had a frequency distribution and you were drawing a graph in statistics, um, the top line, the, the term uh, is going on the bottom line here of our graph and the value here is going up the side. So just like if we were drawing something from a frequency distribution, like a bar chart or something like that. So the top goes to the bottom and the bottom goes to the side over here. Um, so all we need to do is plot the points just like um, we do in coordinate geometry essentially or if we were drawing a graph in functions uh, and again it's going to turn out to be a straight line now the thing is with the straight line we probably we learned in functions already that you don't have to plot each one of these points because if it's going to turn out to be a straight line you just have to uh, plot the first point in the line and the last point in the line and then join the line up okay so uh, in this case, the first point, if we take it as 1, 1, okay, so term 1, value 1, down there, and then the last point is term 5, value 9. Now, normally I'd have a ruler or something, uh, I'll try, it's difficult to do while holding the camera, but I would advise all of you always to use a ruler and graph paper. So, 5, 9. There we go. I might just pause a second to draw the line. Okay, so that's the line there. And that's the graph of the sequence Tn equal to 
2n minus 1. Now I suppose just to check, term 2 would be 3, term uh, 3 is 5, so it is uh, lining up fine without having to put each of the dots in and then draw a line through all the dots. Uh, a few things to note then. Uh, the first thing is that with uh, number sequences like this, uh, when we're talking about terms, well, we can't have a negative term. We can't have a minus term. So we won't ever have uh, a part of your graph going back this way. Now, it is possible to have uh, the actual value of the position be negative. So we could have a graph going down here. Like for instance, term one could be minus three. So we could have our, if you like, y value down here somewhere, but we can't have a minus third term, if you like. So we can't have our graph going across this way. Now we will see when we go on to do real life versions of these questions that sometimes it is useful to have a term zero. So we might end up going as far as the actual axis here, plotting a point somewhere on here or in here. Um, but we'll wait until we go to those um, uh, examples to draw that type of graph. Um, so this is it. That's your linear. The next example we'll do in a second will be graphing a quadratic.